Um, Vice President Gore, it has been over a decade since the release of your last film, mm. which was An Inconvenient Truth back in 2006. What do you think has changed and why have you decided to go back mm. and do this sequel? Well, there have been two big changes in the last decade. One is that the climate-related extreme weather events have unfortunately become a lot more common and more destructive. Mother Nature is speaking up about uh, the climate crisis and people are getting that message. The second big change is that we have the solutions now. A decade ago, they were visible on the horizon, but you had to rely on technology experts to assure you that they would eventually get here. Now they're here and electricity from the sun and wind is now much cheaper in many regions than electricity from dirty fossil fuels. Uh, and soon it would be cheaper everywhere. Electric cars are becoming affordable. All the manufacturers are preparing to mm -hmm. offer their own models. Uh, battery technologies uh, coming down in cost quite dramatically. And hundreds of new efficiency technologies are helping us reduce emissions. What do you think looking back over the past decade, is the single most catastrophic climate-related event that took place between your two films that best illustrates the drastic threats that this mm. planet is facing? Well, there have been many, unfortunately, but one that I predicted, or the scientists mm -hmm. predicted in the first movie, was that the 9-11 uh, uh, Twin Towers Memorial site in Manhattan would be flooded uh, with seawater as the seas rose, uh, as the sea level went up and storm surge, uh, uh, so storm surges then could uh, flood that site. And critics said, oh, that's a terrible exaggeration. But when Superstorm Sandy uh, came across waters that were mud five degrees Celsius warmer than they should be because of the climate crisis, it did, it did flood. And, uh, years before the scientists predicted it would. We have had progress, we've seen advancements, but there have also been political setbacks. You yourself in the movie said, every boxer has a plan until he gets punched in the face. <laughs> so it would be remiss of me not to mention President Trump, yes. who of course recently pulled out of the Paris Climate Change Accord. Um, can you see his policies severely damaging your campaign? I worried that they would. I worried uh, when he made his speech withdrawing the U.S. from the Paris Agreement that other countries would use that as an excuse to pull out themselves, but it didn't happen. And I was so heartened the very next day when the entire rest of the world redoubled their commitment to the Paris Agreement. And in the U.S., the governors of our largest states and hundreds of mayors of cities and business leaders all spoke up and said, we'll fill the gap. We're going to meet the requirements of the Paris Agreement, regardless of Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's at all worth trying to convince him about the threats of climate change? I did try to convince him. I went to see him after the election and continued talking with him after he got to the White House. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had reason to believe that he would stay in the Paris Agreement. I thought he would come to his senses, but I was wrong. Uh, he surrounded himself with a rogues gallery of climate deniers who are responsive to the large carbon polluters, uh, and he's thrown his lot in with them. But others are not persuaded by Donald so Trump. So this can still work without the United States on board? Well, there's a distinction between Donald Trump and the United States of mm -hmm. America. The United States as a whole is going to meet its commitments under the Paris Agreement. And by the way, legally, the first day in which the U.S. could withdraw is the day after the next presidential election in 2020. Uh, and with the governors and mayors and business leaders ignoring him and even more redoubling their own commitments to meet this agreement in spite of him, mm -hmm. I think that the damage he can do has been uh, limited. Uh, he can still do some damage, but for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. And the reaction to Donald Trump has been an upsurge of climate activism that's unprecedented. There are people resistant to change, including in the United States government, but one demographic, and I'm proud to say this, that are more willing, it seems, to step up and face the issues are the young. Yes. The majority of my yes. audience are under 25. Yeah. What can our generation do to ensure that we leave our children with a world that is even better than the one that we inherited? That's the key question, and I'm so glad you asked it. 
first of all, learn about the climate crisis. Uh, this movie is a great way to learn everything you need to know about it. Secondly, win the conversations, use your voice. All social revolutions first are won in conversations, even before the laws change. And it's not an accident that most all of the previous social revolutions, giving women the right to vote, having civil rights laws, anti-apartheid uh, being uh, won, mm -hmm. young people have always been in the vanguard of these movements. Uh, the gay rights movement, uh, many in my generation said, oh, I don't know. And, but young people said, what are you talking about? <laughs> this is just obviously the right thing to do. You can't discriminate against people because of who they fall in love with. I mean, for goodness sake. So the climate movement is right on the verge of a similar tipping point. We are winning, mm -hmm. but we need to win faster, and young people can make all the difference. What do you say to those, not deniers, but what do you say to those who believe that these efforts being taken are just too little too late, that climate change is now unpreventable and completely irreversible? Well, the scientists uh, tell us we still do have time mm -hmm. to avoid the catastrophic consequences of the climate crisis. Uh, regrettably, some damage has been done that's uh, not recoverable. Uh, some large sections of Antarctica and Greenland, for example, are likely to continue uh, melting no matter what we do. But we still can control the pace of those changes and we still can avoid the truly catastrophic effects that could threaten the future mm -hmm. of civilization. Uh, despair is just another form of denial. We don't have time for that. We have work to do. If you had it your way, let's say you had won in 2000 mm -hmm. in the presidential election, how different do you think the planet would have been today? Well, I'd love to run the experiment and see, but uh, since that's not possible, uh, all I can say is I like to think that uh, things would have uh, turned out very differently and we would, uh, we, we would not have made some of the mistakes that I, I think have been made, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like invading Iraq and not uh, uh, moving faster to solve the climate crisis. I mean, still talking about you and involvement in politics, would you ever consider running again for office and bringing climate change back to the forefront of the political agenda? Well, I appreciate the question, <laughs> uh, but I am a recovering politician, mm -hmm. and the longer I go without a relapse, the less likely one becomes. Mm -hmm. There are people who have said that this is all very hopeful, this is very yeah. optimistic, mm -hmm. but look and ask what has your movement achieved in the last decade to give us some element of hope for decades to come? Well, global emissions have stabilized finally, uh, and they've started coming down in North America, in Europe, in China. Uh, we have achieved the Paris Agreement. Mm -hmm. Virtually every nation in the world has now formally agreed and committed to getting net zero global warming pollution by mid-century. Uh, that's cause for real hope. It's an historic breakthrough that has sent a powerful signal to business, industry, investors, and civil society. Well, I very much hope you're, you're right. Thank you so much for all the work Thank you're you. doing, Mr. Vice President. Thank you. Thanks, Benji. Really